Professor Abinda was previously at the College of International Security Affairs, National Defense University in Washington, and RSIS in Singapore. He's now at the Rabdan Academy in Abu Dhabi and is Director, Center for Peace and Development Studies, India. Um, his areas of specialization include regionalism, human security, political violence and terrorism, and cybersecurity. So over to you, Professor Arabinda. Thank you, Mom. Uh, I would like to stand and uh, talk. But let me see. Okay, well, I think you need, yes, I think you need to adjust your screen. And can I remind I you, let's I try know. and keep it tight to 10 minutes, everyone, because uh, I do sure, want sure, to. Sure. We've got a lot of interesting uh, questions coming but, in. Yeah, but Over I will seek, seek your permission for one minute's uh, uh, excess time to uh, say something very nice about uh, uh, the organizers. Uh, having spent so much time in Southeast Asia, uh, this, uh, this place is not new to me. Uh, I, uh, in this particular uh, uh, conference, I mentioned this particular panel, I, uh, I would like to recognize uh, Kavhi, who is a old friend of mine, and uh, also Admiral Chauhan. Uh, uh, if you remember, last uh, yesterday there was a book uh, by me, which uh, was introduced by Dr. Prabhide, uh, Professor Prabhide, and that book was about South China Sea issues, and it was sponsored uh, long time back by National Maritime Foundation in India. Uh, due to some reason, I was not able to complete that book for their within their time limit, but I'm happy that. Uh, and I'm not a old, uh, I'm a new novice to uh, NMF. I have done a lot of work uh, with you, with your organizations, sir. And uh, I really acknowledge the scholarship. Uh, I was not essentially a maritime security expert, but I would say that my interactions with Maritime Foundation in India gave me an opportunity to become uh, some sort of, you know, uh, so thank you, sir, and I acknowledge your presence here. I like your presentation, and uh, all the others, others like Lee, uh, Lee and others who uh, got me into this uh, conference. Anyway, I, I'm going to talk about. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, Okay, this, the script is about cyber security. And when I thought about it, and I talked to few of the organizers, I didn't know exactly what to talk about because uh, I am actually basically a security specialist, not cyber security specialist. But I found when I did some research, I found that there are a lot of things that interacts with my field of knowledge. And uh, here we are. So I'm going to talk about these things, impact of COVID-19. Uh, I, I, I think I'm an expert on that because I myself had COVID-19, spent 28 days in ICU with uh, uh, ventilators. I'm still recovering, believe me, after effects. And it's not something which is going to go away so soon. Whether you believe it or not, whether I see people in front of my house moving around without masks, second wave, third wave, and others. And I'm going to talk about what are the challenges that this particular pandemic left on us. I was in Singapore when SARS took place. I have gone through that even though I was not affected. But I knew the fear and uh, the impact, particularly on the medical system, affecting doctors, healthcare providers, it created. 
And what we see now is something totally different, totally different. And if I don't talk about it, I won't be able to talk about cyber security issues. It has changed our lifestyles, working partners, introduced new threats. Cyber criminals are always there, but they now have come back in numbers. And what about terrorist organizations, extremists? So let me go about it. This, I don't know how many people know this. This was something which I, I uh, got across when I was in the USA. Give me liberty or give me COVID-19. When in mask rules, social distancing was being introduced in a number of countries. There was much resistance to that. And people are shouting that I want my liberty. I don't want to use my masks. Let me have COVID. It was during the previous presidency in US. And just to give you an example, on 26 November, US Supreme Court struck down New York governor's executive order to limit religious gatherings because of the fear of the spread of the disease. And they said public policies cannot transgress the rules of the constitution. But some people said it was scientifically irritated this could cost lives. Why I am telling you this thing is to just to let you know that we are living in a situation where we do not know exactly how much rules and regulations we can implement that will not or impact on our liberties. Or should liberties be compromised to make our life safe? I'm frankly being a student of democracy, being a student of international relations, I'm still not sure where we are going to where we are going or what we are going to do. It's very difficult to decipher the mindset of the people, including the Prime Minister of the one of the uh, leading democracies in the world, United Kingdom, how they do want to implement these rules. India, for example, so many things. We'll come back to that. Okay, COVID-19, once in a lifetime occurrence, impact more privacy than 9-11 or world wars. Deaths have definitely increased nine uh, uh, world war casualties. Economy, environment, social cohesion, geopolitics, trade, mental health, everything is impacted. Entire world is affected and for an indefinite period. You can say that is going to end tomorrow. Today itself, we saw the news, the third wave is coming. New variants, Delta Plus, Kamda, Kappa, you name it. Lockdowns, transformations in your life. And what has happened to us in societal and other aspects. Lifestyle requirements, we have to change our lifestyles. For last 15 months almost, I'm at home. I'm not able to go out. Before that, I was, for eight months, I was in a hotel in Abu Dhabi. Not even able to go out anywhere. Masks stay at home, social distancing, marriage ceremonies. We like marriages. Last time my mother died. Unfortunately, I was not able to attend all the ceremonies that is required to do the funeral of my mother. Can you believe how it has changed our lifestyles? And to be frank, I was distressed because I was never able to be my, with my, in the same city as my mother is, was for almost 25 years. I was in the same city, she died in the same city, but I was not able to attend her 
death ceremonies. You can imagine the psychological impacts that has anxiety and depression. And then what about workplace requirements? I am working from home. I am actually working in Abu Dhabi officially, but I am working from Bhubaneswar in Odisha, India. I am not able to go back. I took vaccines thanks to government regulations. The vaccine is not recognized by the WHO to let me fly. And also, by, by some bureaucratic means, I, I got a certificate where it says I have taken two first doses of vaccines. That means I have to go and take another vaccine, or I don't know exactly what to do. Yeah. Sorry, I, sorry, I, to this, I think uh, you've got just uh, uh, one or two minutes. If... Tell me, madam. I think you've got one or two minutes. Uh, just okay. to remind you, you asked me to let you. So, so what we have, no, I don't think I've lost 10 minutes, but give me two, three minutes, please. Uh, okay, so, maybe you'd like to get to this uh, cyber security point. Governments has created demands on technology. Working from home requires personal computers, home networks, and all those are those sorts of vulnerabilities. So we have ransomware attacks. Denial of service attacks, social engineering attacks against employees. I'll, I'll just quickly uh, go through this. What about the extremist terrorists? What are they doing now? Good thing is that they are not able to recruit from the open space. So they are recruiting from the from online, online sources. Creating disinformation, conspiracy theories, propaganda. They are telling that the existing state order has not been able to take care of the people, take care of the people, and take care of the uh, individuals who are affected by COVID. And they are actually uh, and then right wing groups, xenophobic, anti Semitic narratives, distrust, and all these things. So, uh, all these things have been done in cyberspace. Most of these things have been done in cyberspace. So, what these people are doing on the physical space, carrying out attacks, if you look at the Jammu attack, I, would, I, I actually wanted to put it like uh, terrorist use of terrorist attacks by social distance, because they cannot carry out attacks in the physical space because of the presence of security forces to impose lockdown measures. So that, of course, Laskar Nikoliva, which is responsible for this attack in Jammu and Kashmir, they have done it before. They have tried to do it before with the toy uh, aeroplanes. But now they have become more sophisticated and they are using it. I'm sorry, uh, Professor, we, we have to yes. wind up. Yeah, I'm going to wrap up in one minute. So I just want to say, Financing is another important thing, which you all must know about it. Money is being used uh, when diverted credit card frauds, SIM cards, and all these things. So these are all cybersecurity threats that we have now confronted about it. So what we are going to do, we have to understand the new risk and try to understand where we can actually work together, not alone to deal with these cyber threats. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you.